We begin this morning with Donald Trump's hush money criminal trial with now seven jurors seated, sworn in after a busy day in court yesterday. The jury is anonymous, so their names were not used in open court. But here's what we do know. The group so far is made up of four men and three women and include two attorneys, a salesman, an oncology nurse, an IT consultant, a teacher, and a software engineer. Other potential jurors were dismissed throughout the day as the process continued into the afternoon. Reporters in the court described Trump as being more alert, at times looking intently at potential jurors as they answered questions. Judge Juan Rashan believes the jury selection process will be completed this week and advised the jurors already seated to be ready for opening arguments to begin on Monday morning. The day ran so smoothly that Donald Trump claimed outside of court that the judge was rushing the trial. So we, we think we have a very conflicted, highly conflicted judge. He shouldn't be on the case and he's rushing this trial. People say it. Well, in no. all 12 jurors and six alternates are needed. The trial will not be in session on Wednesdays, so the process re resumes tomorrow. Um, so, uh, George, George Conway, uh, the pay seems to be uh, going at a fairly quick clip. What, do you, what are you seeing in there? What do you expect? Well, it is going uh, faster than it seemed to at first. I mean, I, it, it, they started with a panel of 96 people, and I think the way that it was expedited, the way the judge really expedited it is he just asked everybody up front, if you can't be impartial, raise your hand, essentially. And that got rid of probably about two-thirds of the, of, of the veneer of the, of the pool. And so they began focusing on the remaining 30 or so. And uh, it, it, it was just done very, very efficiently. They had, there was a questionnaire, and they made each person get into the box and, and go through the questionnaire and answer questions yes, no, and explain if there were complicating factors. The judge would intervene a little if, to, if, if there was a question that, that you know, came off of, that, that required a little uh, elucidation. Uh, and then uh, the, the lawyers got to get to ask some questions for a half an hour each of the first right. group, and they managed to come up with six people, and then they came up with a war at the end of the day, and it was all, it was all very efficiently done. Um, and I think it's, it's going to speed up because each side gets, ten, each side gets ten uh, peremptory challenges, meaning they can just challenge for no reason without stating a reason, and both sides have used six to strike. Jurors, so they only have four left. So there's a limit to what they can wait, what they can do. They need to pick 11 more jurors. Five will be the uh, will sit on the panel of 12, and then there'll be six alternates. So that that there's a pretty good chance. I think there's no reason why they can't get this done by Friday. Yeah, wow. there were some concerns a couple of days ago about how slow this was going, but it really ramped up yesterday. And, George, you were in the overflow room, room down at the courthouse yesterday, so you know that at one point during that jury selection, the judge gave Donald Trump and his attorney a warning about Trump's behavior. It came after one potential juror was being questioned about her Facebook post after the 2020 election. Once she left the room, the judge admonished Trump, telling his lawyers, quote, your client was audibly uttering something. I will not tolerate that. I will not have any jurors intimidated in this courtroom. I want to make that crystal clear. That's the judge talking directly to Donald Trump and his lawyer. So, uh, George, we knew about the histrionics a couple of days ago. Some more, it looks like, there was yesterday inside that courtroom. How does that play? How does that affect what's happening inside the courtroom? Well, again, I mean, it's great that the judge is, is clamping down on that early because his conduct in the courtroom um, is really, it's, it's very demonstrative and it's very emotional at times. And I, don't, I actually don't think he has a complete ability to control himself. Uh, I think we saw that during the E. Jean Carroll trial. I think we're going to see it again. And I think it's important for the judge to give him warnings that he can't do that in front of the jury. But the fact is, to the extent he does that to the in front of the jury, it shows disrespect for the jury and doesn't necessarily help him. And that's one of the reasons why I think that
that he was hit with that $83.3 million verdict during the second E. Jean Carroll trial is he basically stood, he sat in front of the jury and just showed contempt for the entire process and contempt for the jury, which dovetailed nicely with the with the with what the what the other side was trying to prove, which was this is a bad guy who doesn't respect anybody and anything, including the law. Yeah, you know, uh, Jonathan Lemire, obviously, you've been covering Donald Trump a very long time. You understand that uh, his lack of discipline is legendary. His ability to sit still, legendary. He'd, he wrote even in The Art of the Deal that basically that he didn't have the discipline to sit down and make plans for, for a day. He just kind of showed up in the office, answered phones, moved around, did think. Drudge puts it this way, Don in hell with a picture of Donald Trump inside the courtroom. And for anybody that knows him, yeah. reported on him, has been around him, the fact that this guy has to sit in a courtroom six, seven, eight hours oh, a that's, day. that's not good for Required him. to. It just did something he's never done his entire life. Mm -mm. Yeah, he has a legendary short attention span, ricocheting from one thought to the next. Uh, would always frustrate his business advisors and certainly uh, his White House staff. He's been... Best I can tell, disciplined only a handful of times in his life, once famously in that last week or so of the 2016 election, the one time he was convinced to stay off Twitter, and he mostly stayed on message at his rallies, and we know that helped him win there in those last few days with an assist from FBI Director Comey. But that is certainly the exception rather than the rule, and he is indisciplined. And, and I was speaking to someone in Trump world last night who, who did acknowledge that, that the, the physical toll this is taking on Trump already. He's, he's a couple times now. We've seen close his eyes, potentially asleep, uh, that he, that, that though he's been in courtrooms a lot in recent months, most of those appearances relatively brief, an hour here, a couple hours there, lots of breaks. He never had to be there for eight, nine hours at a time, and he's going to have to do that each and every day. Yes, he gets today off, but he'll be back tomorrow. He'll be back Friday. He'll be back Monday. And there is some concern in Trump world about the physical toll this will take him on him his campaign schedule already has to be curtailed inherently because of the time commitment to New York. But they also just wonder, will he be up for it? Will he be able to then, in his free moments, hit the road? He made a brief appearance at a local business yesterday. Mm. His aides are talking about having more New York City events. There's a limit to how much he'll get politically out of those. Uh, you know, he's scheduled right. to have a rally in North Carolina this weekend. But between the physical toll and the lack of money, this and the need right. to be in the courthouse, Joe and Mika, this may be a dramatically smaller campaign than we're used to from Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The lack of money uh, preventing him from doing so much. But there's, a, there's been a big difference between this time in the courtroom and past times. Past times, most of the time, it was voluntary. Right. Here, I mean, big difference between a voluntary uh, uh, appearance and an appearance where you are required to attend. And I will just say, yeah, anybody sitting six, seven, eight hours, you know me, <laughs> if I were sitting somewhere for eight hours, I would be, I would be falling asleep. I would be. You like, can't even get through writing four. Writing songs. Yeah, it's hard <laughs> to even do this for four. And Mika lets me talk all the time to stay awake. So I can't imagine. I, you, you know, what a, what a, now, I'm serious. You know, what a physical well, toll for anybody. This is where also it helps to have, you know, real firsthand knowledge of Donald Trump over the course of uh, over a decade. Um, and the guy has no attention span. We've seen it up front and how we've known people who've worked for him and they have to work around this sort of ADD mentality that he has and the need for attention, constant attention, making moments. And Mara Gay... And, and, and by the way, being in charge in whatever he oh. sets up, every meeting, every everything, so he's in charge here. As you were saying yesterday, Mika, Mika went through a, a, a scene from the courtroom where <laughs> Donald Trump had to sit while they're going, okay, let's see here. Okay, juror <laughs> We could 14. go to page 4A well, like, wait, and look it, at clause I don't think B. it's 4A. You know I what? think it's... You know, we have to go wait, back to Bring the, the other ones in. Hey, we, I, we need, can you imagine just, Donald Trump sitting through that, like, going crazy? Going Because, nuts. again, I, and I think, you, you, again, you... you, you put a lot of CEOs on that list sitting yeah. there uh, for six, seven, eight hours. This is, Everybody. why do I say all this? It's going, as, as Jonathan O'Meara said, the campaign's right. It's going to exact a toll on him.
I want to counter that with the rage that he might feel um, in this situation of not having control. Mara Gay, I think. You know, there's the other side of this and the concern some might have, many might have, about the gag order being broken, sort of broken already many times, and people's, number one, lives being put in danger by what he says about them, but also, number two, ginning up anger. Uh, he walks outside of the court, courthouse and does these speeches. We don't take most of them at this point unless he says something of newsworthiness um, and then going to this bodega and having hundreds of people wanting to meet him and using these moments covered by Fox News and other far right networks as sort of campaign events. I think there is some I think there is something to be said for what he can do with this. Your thoughts. Well, that's certainly a concern. And, and you saw yesterday that the judge recognized that concern in admonishing him and saying, I'm not going to have, you know, mumblings in my courtroom that could intimidate potential jurors. So, you know, obviously that is a concern that's shared by many. I do agree with George. I think that his PR capabilities are going to be somewhat limited in New York City, or, or maybe it was John that mentioned that a moment ago. That's absolutely true. It's an ongoing concern because essentially he's like a caged animal and, and that's a dangerous situation. He's feeling very threatened. Uh, he's out of control. And so we do expect him to lash out. Anybody who has covered him over the past decade can expect that. But, you know, one of the things that I actually find really reassuring about the past couple days is just how mundane and ordinary this trial looks. I was actually called for jury duty in New York City last year, and it was much the same kind of process in a criminal trial. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I was, I was not... Uh, I ended up not serving, uh, mostly because of the work that we do here. But, uh, you know, it is reassuring that Donald Trump is no different than anybody else who would be called in this kind of a trial. And you know who else is having to sit there for eight, nine hours a day? These jurors whose lives have been right. interrupted. And, you know, that is part of the democratic process. And it is playing out so far exactly as it should, which isn't supposed to be fixated on some outcome, but on a fair trial in a free democracy that would be no different for anybody else. And I, I also think that that really does give a little bit of, of gravitas to this case that has been in some quarters controversial, seen as, as maybe not as serious as the other trials. But the reality is, and I've covered trials here in New York, anybody... Uh, who may have committed a crime should be held accountable for that crime. And we're seeing this play out, and I think it's reassuring. I think it's hopefully encouraging Americans and voters, ultimately, that our system still works, even for a former president. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.